Hello, everyone. My name is Julie McVeigh, and this is Unordinary Made Ordinary, where we talk about extraordinary experiences of everyday people. And today, our special guest is Stephanie Garrett. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. I'm Thanks. so glad you can hang out with me today. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in your experience. Um, <clears throat> I'm interested in all, but yours sounds very interesting to me because it's also my wheelhouse. This is what I enjoy doing, lucid dreaming and astral projection. But before mm -hmm. we get into that, could you just share a little bit about yourself, a little background on who you are, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, well, um, I'm just a girl from Michigan and uh, didn't really go to college yet. I, instead, I did soul searching mm -hmm. and went to therapy, which I highly recommend for anyone who, you know, is looking for healing. And so all that stuff really helped me uh, find out who I am and who I want to be. And I've just always been interested in metaphysical, I've always been drawn to anything magic. Really? Uh, just even mm -hmm. since childhood? Pretty much. That's actually the main experience I wanted to share that started this whole invitation. Oh. It happened to me when I was a child. Oh, okay. And I wasn't looking for it either. So no, do you, did you have a religious background growing up at all? Spiritual? Yeah, not very much. Um, when I was younger, we did go to church. Um, it was a Protestant church, I believe. And uh, one day I get ready for church like I'm supposed to, and um, nobody else in the house is awake. And so I'm, when I finally meet somebody, they tell us that we're not going anymore. And so I had this whole question of, do we still believe in God and all that stuff? Wait, you, you went down, you went to get ready and someone was in the house that said you're not going? Yeah, yeah. Everybody's sleeping, but eventually someone woke up and... Oh, I see. And they said, oh, we're not going, so you don't need to get ready? Yeah, mm-hmm. Yep. Um, yep. So after that, never been really religious, oh. but I've definitely always felt um, spiritual. I used to consider myself a Wiccan, but I don't really consider myself um, ascribing to any, you know, sect or anything nowadays. Okay. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, could you mm -hmm. share your first experience since it happens to be the one you're going to share is your first so <clears throat> please yeah when sure. when how old were you when this happened um about seven or eight maybe wow okay yeah um okay so it all uh happened um I was watching something on tv and it, it might have been unsolved mysteries something like that and this woman is describing her near death experience where she's uh legally dead and she found herself in kind of another realm or something like in a cave and she sees um, a woman who looks just like her walking up to her and she felt like she was drawn away and this other person was coming in to replace herself um, so she walks past a stranger and then is revived and apparently she woke up with a completely different personality. Um, oh. Yeah, she, all different interests. And she's trying to explain that to her family. And um, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense to a lot of people, uh, you know, because if she's a different person, how does she remember that? But I was just contemplating it. And I'm laying down in bed. Um, I'm First staring of all, at that's, a, that's an interesting story, by the way. It, it really and is, yeah. That's it's a really so, interesting story. And I have heard... Yeah of soul uh walk-ins have you heard of that yeah. terminology yes that's what okay. she's talking about yeah yeah that's fascinating i actually know a girl personally who feels like that may have happened to her but really? um super interesting but you're only seven wow yeah, what a really curious really. child okay so yeah please. okay <laughs> so <laughs> what yeah you're well and you know smart obviously and oh well thanks you know um <laughs> clever curious you know about everything so very interesting please continue sure. didn't mean to interrupt <laughs> oh, absolutely um yep yeah. okay so I'm just thinking about her story and just trying to imagine how it could be how that could be possible and I'm thinking about like you know the soul and how they're connected to our bodies and what that means and um yep so I'm in bed staring at the ceiling and I start feeling this like vibration in my feet uh -huh. 
and it was really really strange sensation um and it, it came with a sound you know kind of like a tectonic plates like an earthly vibrational sound and um something in my gut told me to just uh, allow it to take me right and i'm feeling it rushing through my veins and stuff and so i just kind of surrendered to it and it felt like an undertow like it just kind of swept me under and then um i found myself in a brand new place i'm standing on like a slab of marble and there's greco-roman style kind of pillars around with uh lavender like silks billowing <laughs> and so it's very strange and i'm just kind of looking around and um i think i started to have some doubt maybe or a little bit of fear because <clears throat> then all these snakes i see start uh you know coming into me like they're encircling me and they're gonna get me yeah. right yeah. um and so when i got scared I thought, you know, home, 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 kind of like Dorothy. And I woke up, snap in my bed, snap back up in my bed. Wow. So this so was, was my first. That was a very, uh, obviously a very memorable experience for you to have taken it with you all of these years into adulthood. It was, I would call it formative, <laughs> you know, and I didn't really talk with people about it because, you know, I have some more logical people in my family you know, critical thinkers. Okay. Um, and so what can I ask when you were, do you remember when you were in that experience, did it seem just as physical as you are right now? It did. It was, um, you know, how a lot of those experiences, um, it's like being awake, but sometimes it's even more awake feeling than hyper. regular day. Yeah. Some people hyper describe real. it hyper real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and it felt very comfortable. Like it felt like it was a place for me in mm. some way you know so did you tell your folks about that um uh, i think i have uh told my mom about it in the past okay. few years oh but not when you were you just kept it to yourself did you think it was a dream when you were little um i honestly did not think it was a dream um and that's why i didn't tell people because i knew they would tell me oh you're you're a child you know you were just dreaming but i never fell asleep <laughs> wow you know? Wow, very, yeah. Um, yeah, you're <clears throat> obviously you're in tune with with the reality that you were living in. And I'm curious, did you have any, um, did you, as a child, did you have any uh, clairvoyance, clairaudience, um, any of those kinds of things? Um, nothing that I really can know beyond just, <laughs> I guess, a little energy sensitivity. Um, I never really saw much um of like spirits or anything like that um, there's a like, one time i could see like a shadow which i can really get way into that because i think um as i got older i think it was something i manifested oh. out of my own subconscious so i was thinking it was a separate entity for myself that was haunting me when really i think it was myself haunting myself mm -hmm. yeah Okay, so now when did you start getting back into these uh, things again? Like, did you just kind of put all that aside and live a normal life or? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I've definitely never been normal, I don't think. Um, I have always been obsessed, like I said, with witches. Um, anything magical, otherworldly has always drawn me to it. Um, so when I was about probably like nine or 10, I started studying Wicca with a couple friends and we started doing magic. Wow, so young. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and so just growing up, you know, having that interest, um, any book I could find, um, I would read it or anybody having discussions like this. I was so to talk about it, I wanted to meet other people, you know? So it's kind of been a lifelong thing, I think. Yeah. Okay. And, so the um, Oh, sorry. No, no, please. I don't want to interrupt. Okay. Yep. Um, I think what's wonderful about it is um, how is the contemplation, just the openness and the curiosity can bring us so much we never knew existed. Um, you know, like there's this quote, um, trust those who seek the truth and uh, beware those who say they've found it. 
<laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. A truth, but not the truth. There's lots of someone recently was saying we can point to truths, but not, you know, like you said, the truth is a different story. Right. But so what else did you get involved in? So you're nine, 10, and you're doing <laughs> magic. Um, <laughs> please share if you did have any interesting experiences, even at that young age, and then what else you started to get into after that? Yeah. Um, well, I can remember one time that one of our spells did kind of work. Um, our parents were friends and they had another friend with three boys and we didn't want them to come over. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we did this thing called an ice giant spell where we wrote their names on some paper and, um, did some ceremony over it and put it in a freezer. And all of a sudden they stopped coming over to the house. But then one day somebody's father found the paper in the freezer and threw it away. And then they started coming back. Wow. So I, I, I kind of believe that, you know, we put some kind of energy out there. And you learned that from a book you, you were all reading. Yep. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Yep. Um, but you, you weren't really, were you a lucid dreamer growing up or not? not really? Oh yeah, definitely. Dreams are definitely important. Um, uh, I've always had lots of recurring dreams as well. Mm -hmm. um, the flying dreams, very lucid dreams where I can decide I'm going to lift myself up into the air now. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Do you, or, you oh, sorry. Oh, not at all. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I too. Yeah, lots of flying dreams. My favorite type growing up. Had no yes. idea. Nowadays, I'm hearing people will say, um, or I've heard some say in the astral world, uh, you know, in the groups, say that anytime you have a flying dream, you're probably astral traveling and you just don't, you're just coming back to the body and interpreting it as a dream, which means, oh, gee, I probably did a lot of astral travel as a kid then. <laughs> yeah. And don't yeah, remember I it. Totally yeah, yep. Because what is consciousness yeah. anyway? You know, how do we define uh, waking reality, dreaming, astral projection? I, I really believe that they're all intertwined and that um, falling asleep is just an easy transition for our brain to comprehend switching into that mindset or state of being. Mm -hmm. you know. Different, like a spectrum of consciousness. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, like, flexible, fluid. Mm -hmm. Like it's just your, it's still always you. Oh, as yeah. far as we can tell, it's always your consciousness, right? Experiencing. Right, right. So who's to say that they're not connected? Well, did you have another astral experience uh, after that, and was it spontaneous, or did you start practicing astral projection? You yeah, know, that's pretty much. Um, there have been a couple others, but that was pretty much the main spontaneous uh, involuntary experience. And then um, it took several years before I even um, understood what it was or had heard the term astral projecting or anything like that. Um, so as soon as I did, then I would go online and start trying to find people's you know, testimonies and things like that. Um, and there's this book called Adventures Beyond the Body, if you've ever heard of that. Mm -hmm. um, the writer is really good and um, he shares a lot of his like awakening that happened really rapidly and he's really really good at astral projecting yeah and when I found that book it really helped me just reading it and having it in my mind so it started happening a lot a lot more um, with practice for some reason it didn't come as naturally and I I'm, I'm still don't know why exactly <laughs> But so clearly you think people can train themselves to do this and learn to do this. So mm -hmm. what, what were the techniques that, that were successful for you for getting out of body? Uh, um, one big one was uh, dream journaling. And when you wake up in the morning, if you have a dream, um, don't get right up out of bed. Just try to lay down and sit with your dream for a little bit and kind of go over it backwards and forwards and then write it down in as much detail as you can remember, even if it's vague, and do that every morning. And after a while, you'll have more lucid dreams and you'll remember them much clearer. And when you're lucid, then you have that control and you can travel. Um, and um, telling yourself when you're falling asleep, like I will now astral project, 
like set an intention, tell yourself it's going to happen and just hold it in your mind. And I think that honestly does most of the work for people. So for those who are new to these concepts, um, what is the difference between a dream and a lucid dream? Oh, yep. Dreams are kind of like you're at their mercy. Um, Whatever happens, you don't feel in control. They just kind of happen to you. Uh, But a lucid dream is where you're aware that you're dreaming. You can recognize that you're sleeping and that this isn't your normal way. And and if you're more practiced or have a desire for it, you can alter your dream, which is really fun. So you have now learned to, um, well, when you do become lucid in a dream and you realize, okay, I'm dreaming, have you, you, do you choose sometimes to alter your dream, continue in the lucid dream and just change it up? Yep. Sometimes I have been dreaming and been unaware. And then there's just a moment where I feel like I woke up, I become aware and I say, oh, I'm dreaming right now. I'm having, I could do anything I want. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the other characters in my dream will say, well, what do you want to do? And I almost always choose to fly because it's just so much fun. You know, I love it. I love the feeling of weightlessness. Do you Mm -hmm. usually fly like to a specific location or just over landscape? Sometimes it's over landscape. Um, Recently, I've been trying to meet other people who are also astral projecting or dreaming. Um, But um, sometimes I go into outer space, like I'll jump off the earth straight to the moon and just check out the view from there. Or um, I like to try to explore. Um, Like one recent, I was just floating in the nothingness of space and I could just feel immense distance and nothingness around me, but it was everything at the same time without light and felt very vulnerable, but it was very exhilarating. So do you see stars and planets when you're out there? Absolutely. When you say you're yeah, in space? Absolutely. Cause I've had both. Mm-hmm. I wasn't sure if this was when it was just like all blackness or if you feel like, oh yeah, this is space. I'm seeing planets and stars and- oh. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And you feel, so you're, how's your, obviously, like you're saying, you can kind of feel the coolness probably on your skin as you're flying, your hair kind of blowing. Mm -hmm. And um, how's your vision? Is it usually, is, does it vary or is it always very crystal clear? It's usually very, very clear. Um, Sometimes, um, and it's all about how I'm feeling right, reflected into my experience. Um, so sometimes it's blurry or a lot of people talk about sometimes they feel themselves rolling, rolling out of their body instead Mm -hmm. of rising. Um, every now and then I'll experience that. Um, for the most part, it is like superhuman sight. Like you could see, look at a snowflake and see all the small details and like the chemical structure if you wanted to. So that's what I was going to ask you also is, um, cause so now from dreaming to lucid dreaming to astral projection, do you differentiate between those? Can you tell us the difference between maybe a lucid dream and when it crosses over to an astral projection? Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm still trying to figure that out a little bit. Um, recently I've just kind of landed on that they're very, very similar, if not the same thing. Um, and I, and how we humans try to define things might be getting in the way a little bit. So more people might astral project than they know, kind of like you were saying, your dreams might've actually been um, travels. Right, even to now, after I learned so much about it, I looked back on some of my earlier lucid dreams. I thought they were lucid dreams and now I'm thinking, oh, you know what? I bet those were projections because it is, um, it's, it's, it's hard to tell the difference for me it's like there's there's so there's so many similarities so do you want to share a couple of your more interesting uh, experiences anything sure. wild <laughs> i'm yeah, sure you've had um, a couple there there's a few <laughs> um so relating back to um <clears throat> consciousness and what is the difference between a dream and projecting and just regular reality that we call day-to-day life you know, I think that um, we can really tap in to different wavelengths 
we can see things that others might not just by contemplating it. So um, there's one night and I'm staying with my parents. They live out in the country. So there's these large windows with no curtains and it's like all black, kind of like these ones. Like, yeah. you know, there's woods out there. Um, so um, I'm just looking out the window and I see an orb fly, fly by the window. So it's kind of startling. Oh, you know, that was a trick of my you know, eyes playing tricks on me, right? Nope, I see another one. Um, I see a red one and a white one. And then after like a minute or so, they keep flying by. And I'm like, well, dang, you know, am I going crazy in my experience? I'm not really sure. Um, and then there's a blue flame out in the yard and it's flickering, but it's growing taller. And then it kind of goes away and then it does it over and over again. Mm. So these lights are just dancing. And I'm honestly, I was a little scared. Uh, for me if I've done so and I'm probably just crazy so I'm gonna go to bed right you know even I was a skeptic of you know I'm always skeptical still but um yep so I go to bed and I have a dream where my dad is in my room and we're just watching the lights together hmm. he says what do you think they're trying to tell us I say I don't know and then right after that I wake up and the lights are still in my window except they're ambulance lights and my dad's having a heart attack <gasps> yeah whoa yeah so that was kind of crazy so I really felt like they were trying to warn me wow that okay. something was happening okay that somebody needed attention you know wow okay and um was your dad okay he yeah okay? yep yep I forgot to say that yes he's okay Yep. yeah that's wild it, very, it really was that's kind of a what so um how long ago was that mm, probably like six years ago and no and no other experiences like that again nothing similar um, the only other time I've seen lights in the woods is at um some family property we have and I've been saying for the longest time in my life I just want to see a unicorn like all this stuff keeps happening, all this crazy stuff. Like, you know, what I'd really like to see as a unicorn. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm one of those girls. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm in the woods at night camping and I'm saying this and I start seeing another light and it was almost, it felt shy. It was, you could see it going through trees uh -huh. and just defying physics. And then I saw like a horn kind of thing, like a glimmering, <gasps> ting, you know, Wow. and I'm like, I'll, I'll call, I'll call that a unicorn. We'll say, we'll say this. Wow. Talk about <laughs> yeah. bringing something into existence, you know, or <laughs> manifesting. Right. Um, yeah. So ha have you ever met a guide or like a loved one who's passed on? Yeah. Um, Guides, for some reason, do not come to me as much. I don't know why. Maybe we just have a different language or something. Um, but there was another dream I had where um, I met a family member. Yep. So my great aunt, Ruth, um, she used to always have um, Christmas for extended family. And we go there and she's always in the kitchen um, getting activities for the kids. We have a good time. And she was just really nice. I used to write her letters a lot and then eventually she passed away and after she did I had regret for not telling her that I loved her because I was so young mm. it's like oh you know I just kind of regret that a little I have a dream one time that I find myself at her house but it's again like a hyper real version of her house you know everything's just a little bit larger a little mm. brighter mm -hmm. and she's having family over like she would a whole bunch of like a couple hundred people and they're all people I've never met before <laughs> um so I asked them you know where's Aunt Ruth oh she's in the kitchen and so I go up and find her and she's sitting with two other women I don't know and um one of the women tells me that she's a relative of mine but we never got to meet because she died before I was born um and you know she's very warm and happy and then um I got to see my aunt Ruth 
and I had to tell her I love her. And she said, I know, I love you too. And that was my whole dream. It was very cathartic. I know. Very cathartic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was a visitation. I mean, that's, that's what they call visitation, correct? I, I believe so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, you know, that's kind of like visiting her in afterlife. Yeah. Right. Wow. So have your uh, feelings about death sort of changed over the years? Mm -hmm. um, I think that they're constantly in flux because um, <clears throat> like I recognize that we're all spiritual beings having a human experience. And I do believe that there is some type of existence after death. That's just my belief. Um, I don't know what it looks like. All I know is that it is uncertain, but it is, um, it, you know, everyone has to get there at some point. So sometimes I feel very secure, um, very comfortable, you know, like the universe will take care of me. Mm. Everything will be fine. And then other times um, I'm terrified <laughs> just of the unknown. Yeah. So, you know, it just goes through little phases, but I ultimately believe that um, even though like I have to leave this identity behind, you know, my name, the girl from Michigan will, you know, no longer be there. Um, you know, there's going to be something, I think, even if I'm not aware of myself in the same way I was before, I think that potentially consciousness is like a main driving force for existence. Yeah, I've thought about that too. And I was talking with a friend recently and said, I don't know if it's really like this, you know, girl, uh, this woman now, Julie from, you know, California, that she'll, she won't disappear any more than the four-year-old Julie. You know, when I look at myself as a child, is she gone? Well, not really, right? I, I don't know. Yeah. I just think we carry all of this with us is what I, I'm guessing. <laughs> right. <clears throat> kind of like a karmic energy sort of thing. And you're so right. We do keep um, being reborn over and over again, like in saying goodbye to your past self. Yeah. How many times and, like, have you already done pass. that? Right. <laughs> yeah. That's part of our, <clears throat> excuse me, that's part of our evolution on this journey and I assume it just continues mm -hmm. yeah it is interesting too how um humans like we're supposed to be so separate different from animals but a lot of um, why people think that we have evolved so differently is because we consciously evolved we contemplate things yes. and try to figure them out yeah so doesn't it make sense that we would continue to consciously evolve right, I mean, right. that's our skill yeah yeah, that makes sense. Um, so I we're getting close on time, but I was wondering, um, you know, if you wanted to share anything um, regarding the benefits to your life, which we kind of touched on, and if you've met more people now who've experienced what you've experienced as you've done more research and are learning more and I'm assuming meeting more people and maybe that's why you connected with Chelsea our fr mutual friend Chelsea <laughs> shout out here. shout out to Chelsea who I also interviewed Aww. <laughs> yeah well um I'm constantly meeting other people with experiences um so and I don't know if it was because I was younger or if people are just waking up more and more mm -hmm. but I think that um there's just a larger tribe of people like you don't have to feel like a weirdo if you do experience that and maybe your family doesn't get it. It's fine, you'll run into people that get it, you know? Um, and it's awesome talking to these people. Yeah. Yeah, but it really it really has um, changed my life for the better. Just the study of like esoterics or whatever you want to call it, metaphysics. Um, it's made me a much happier person. Um, sometimes you do um, glean wisdom or get direction from dreams, just being open to that. They yeah. can help you make decisions in life or show you where you need to work on yourself, like force you to look at your shadow self so that you can heal it. Um, so yeah, I definitely, definitely used to have a lot of depression and anxiety, mm. but um, studying this stuff 
and talking with people and therapy and a little bit of hallucinogens um, really helped me feel more secure in myself and a lot happier. Like I, like I can look at things differently and yeah. decide what's good. Can I ask you the hallucinogens? Now I've heard of people use those just for like, um, like a therapy and then other people, like an ongoing therapy and then others that have used it occasionally sort of more recreational and it brings them into an astral experience. Is that what you're mm -hmm. using them for one or the other? Yeah, um, I would say that um, I do um, have a reverence for hallucinogens. I don't mm -hmm. think that it should be taken um, recklessly or to like get effed up like some people do. Right. You know, even though I have taken them recreationally a couple mm -hmm. times at concerts and stuff, stuff like that. But um, I really think that if you um, take, it, take it ceremoniously as like a sacred experience yeah. with people you trust in a good environment, mm. um, it's like therapy intensified and it's all personalized mm. and it is kind of hard to explain because it is such a personal thing, mm -hmm. but it, 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 yeah. for, it does force your brain to yeah. elevate itself and get a higher perspective, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and like you can really feel energy, like things just become more clear. And so when you come back from your trip, you can really take lessons that you learn and apply them to your life and it'll make it better. <clears throat> I have, I know a couple of people who have used them in um, places where it's legal and they, and they have guides as well to help them on their journey. And so it's a safe environment, but it's very, I haven't personally, but I think it's very interesting that uh, for some, it's been quite beneficial, beneficial to moving them forward in their, the, expansion of their consciousness and like you said their perspective um right. you know i forgot to ask you stephanie if you are working on any other like working on any projects or if, if you wanted the listeners to be able to connect with you and it's certainly okay if you're if you're not in that place and some of my guests are not which is fine <laughs> sure um well i'm actually writing a book on dreams and consciousness pretty much everything we've been talking about Oh, wow. Um, cool. So I'd like to um, invite people to share their stories, their oh. near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, um, lucid dreams, astral projections, and um, I'll add that to the book, but I'll also be using research from different scientific fields to support, um, you know, this reality, that it's not just a bunch of hooey, that, you know, there is a physical and, um, observable you know phenomena happening you know um oh, so that's yeah. cool. how so if, if i may ask how far along are you and what's the the estimated time you're thinking of maybe is there a finish time you have in mind you know um my goal is um before next year so okay. i have about a year that i'm giving myself okay. to it's gonna you know, be get fun. it all edited that'll be, a, be a really fun project for you that's, that's it so is. Cool. I've already had some people share their stories and honestly um I didn't realize how much it would move me because mm -hmm. this one person that shared their story recently and this all typed uh it brought me to tears I had to take some time after reading it mm -hmm. <laughs> to just soak it all in and you know it really made me think about a lot of different things mm -hmm. Well, I will then share, you can share your contact information now if you want, you don't have to, I can get it from you as well, and put it in the video description, which I'll, I'll do either way. Okay, Sound like yeah, I mean, that'd be nice for people visually to, you know, okay. see it. Yeah. Okay, did you have a title yet for the book? I or you want to hold really off don't. On sharing that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a fun part, but it's not the most important, really. <laughs> it, yeah, probably later. You'll figure it out later. It's been so enjoyable chatting with you. Um, before I sign out, though, any last words that you want to share, please do. Well, we did get a mm -hmm. chance to talk about quite a bit, and I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, wow, that went by fast. Um, yeah, it does. I, wow. <laughs> Um, last words, I guess I would just tell people, like, I hope that you, like they say, live your best life, mm. you know, um, try to be compassionate and understanding where with others, it might help you have less conflict 
And um, whenever you're mad at somebody, ask yourself hard questions. You know, why are you mad at them? Um, if, if there's something that you're mad about in your own life that you're projecting. And beyond that, just, just follow your joy. You know, if it's listening to music, if it's drinking a cup of tea, you know, if it's just standing outside and looking at stuff, if that feels good to you, just keep doing that every moment and you'll have a good life. Yeah. Wow. I love that. Follow your joy. And um, sometimes we, we need to be reminded of that on a very regular basis. <laughs> uh, we humans, we're complicated. Oh, Thank hi. you. I'm not perfect by any means. <laughs> well, well, that's that's part of our journey. That's part of the fun of our journey. Mm -hmm. So anyway, thank you so, so much for taking this time to hang out with me. I have loved getting to know you a little bit. And um, thank you to everyone watching. This has been Julie McVeigh with Unordinary Made Ordinary. Hoping you'll join us next time for another fascinating interview. And if you enjoyed this interview, of, of course, give it a thumbs up and then hit or hit the like button. And then if you like this type of content, please subscribe. And uh, I hope you're having a fantastic day or evening wherever you are on the planet or off the planet. And oh. we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Julie. <laughs>